So you've heard of taking your work with you on vacation. Usually that requires a, like a laptop or, you know, a notebook or something like that. I've actually brought my work with me on vacation since we uh, had a family trip scheduled and we're up here at Moon Lake in Utah. I've brought along with me a P7100 pump, but it is a Chinese replica pump. Um, I ordered it because I don't have a regular P7100 pump ready to go. It's at the build shop right now. So I thought, you know what? I couldn't find any YouTube videos of anybody reviewing the Chinese pump to see what the differences are, if it looks like it has any quality to it, if it's worth it at all. And so I'm gonna give a real breakdown of what I find in it. Um, I'm gonna be doing delivery valves and governor springs and a couple other things. So in the disassembly, as I'm taking it apart, I'm gonna show you guys what I see and uh, just enjoy nature. What better place to take apart a pump and do some work than uh, having this scenery with me? I've got a camp trailer here and all the tools I need. So let's get to it. So these are the tools that I have for this job. Some uh, ratchets, basic socket sets, some wrenches. Uh, this of course is a specialty tool. This is for taking out the uh, delivery valve holders. This is a snap-on, but you can get them on Amazon pretty cheap. And then this is for setting the timing, which we probably won't use yet, but I may put that in there to check the cam profile while I have it apart. Um, shouldn't take anything complicated here, but I'm gonna go through uh, one by one and show you the steps of uh, the different things that I'm gonna do to this pump. Let's start by just looking it over. It came out of the box just like this. Of course, it has this uh, tag there that we know is not accurate. Uh, Bosch didn't make these pumps in Germany. It's not made by Bosch, but they decided to put that tag on there anyways. There's another one on the rear section. First things I notice are, of course, if you have a Dodge, it's missing the inserts that, uh, that adapt it down to, a, I think it's an M8 1.25 to allow you to bolt the side bracket onto it. Let me see if I have that. Yeah, to attach the bracket, of course, you need um, a spot to put those bolts. However this goes, yeah, like that. So I don't know where to get those inserts. Uh, maybe someone can tell me in the comments, but I'm gonna have to find those. Uh, I did extract them from my other pump and it was a huge pain. So that's one thing right off the bat is that needs to be dealt with. I don't even know if that one's threaded. That one appears to not be threaded. So you have two spots to put that. I don't know what I'm gonna do about that um, to attach that. Aside from that, um, I'm looking at the fasteners and trying to compare those to the fasteners on a, um, a Bosch brand P-Pump. Governor Spring Port uh, uses a giant flathead opening as a, instead of the 24 millimeter cap that they have on the, uh, the Bosch pump. I did go through and break a few of these things loose so I wouldn't be struggling to open them on camera, but I have not, so far have not taken this apart. It looks like it comes shipped, uh, not at top dead center, but that looks like a nice piece. No problems there. Can't see inside there, but I will roll it over and set it to top dead at some point. Um, it does have the shutoff solenoid lever and the throttle lever, both come with it. The throttle on this is a little bit stiff. It has really good spring back with no springs, with no external springs. So I don't know if that's something different. Every Bosch pump I've ever, I've ever uh, throttled feels really, really loose and it moves freely and you have to have external springs to, to get it back to idle. Uh, this bracket looks really similar. The idle stop set screw looks uh, very different, but it's not bad. It looks like it'd be really easy to adjust compared to the uh, Bosch one. Looking at all the types of screws and fasteners, um, these are a five point head, so it's not a Torx, which I thought it was, so I don't know how I'm gonna get those out. Luckily, I don't have too many of them to get out, but that is one, two, three, four, five. Yep, that is five sided, so you're gonna have to have a special socket for that. Uh, it's nice, these are, there's no security um, or snap off screws on these. So you have a 10 mil, 10 mil, and then those are both those same five sided uh, star bit fasteners. Um, the AFC housing is a 10 mil, 10 mil, 8 mil, 8 mil, so that's nice. They obviously know you're going to get in there and mess with it anyway, so they make it easy for you. Uh, this is a security bit five sided, so that's going to be really hard to get out. I want to definitely want to swap that out because I'll be adjusting my star wheel frequently. 
And then the smoke screw has a little bit different setup on it too, which is nice because I'm sure they know you're gonna mess with this stuff. So they leave it open for you to adjust it right off the bat. Coming around to the front, we have our rack cap. Um, I'm not sure, I didn't loosen that one yet. I'm not sure if that's the same depth as a Mac cap, but I will be comparing it versus a Mac cap um, and then replacing it if not. It does come with a nut, which is very nice, and then it comes with this protective cover on it. All this stuff on the front looks very similar to a Bosch. I mean, so far it looks nice. It's got the casting on it. They've got Bosch tags, which we know are not accurate. It's got some part numbers on the governor housing. It's probably just, uh, you know, castings, whether they, you know, got the Bosch original casting machines or whether they just recast it, I'm not sure. But the casting itself doesn't look bad. Let's come around to this side. Looking straight on at the back, it looks pretty normal, pretty standard. Um, coming around to this side, it does come with a an inlet feed fitting, and it does come with a uh, return banjo for the return line. Uh, the casting, the machining doesn't look bad at all. These are all machined how they're supposed to be, and what was the other thing? There was one thing I saw. Looks like the machining right here isn't perfect. There's a little lip right there. That's not bad, but I mean, it just shows the, you know, not 100% quality. It looks like the casting is a little bit rough in some spots, but I doubt that's anything that will become a problem as far as the, uh, the drivability of this part. Well, let's go ahead and pull this AFC housing off. A couple of 10 mil bolts here. All right, so looking inside here, it looks like the foot looks pretty normal compared to what I'm used to seeing. Focus, there we go. Um, I'm gonna tear this apart and look at the spring and the travel and all that stuff. Um, of course, if you guys know anything about modifying these, um, usually you take about three to five millimeters off of this to get more rack travel. And then there's a washer behind the spring inside of there that you can modify and you can modify the spring and that gives full travel in the AFC housing. And of course we have the uh, fuel plate right here. So let's take that out and look guys. I assume it's gonna be a standard fuel plate profile. Okay, there's the fuel plate. I think someone probably knows better than me but that looks like a standard profile from what I can tell. Either way, probably not what we want, so we'll be changing that out as well. I'll have a look down in there. It looks pretty pee pumpish to me. Let's see if the rack moves freely. Looks pretty good. Let's pull this off. Cool. Rack appears to travel really freely. So that's all good. Let's see what the, uh, there's the shutoff does its job and then the throttle is doing its job. So all that stuff seems to work well. Um, next thing, uh, let's actually, let's do the delivery valves first. That'll be easy and then we'll get into the governor springs. Okay, real quick before I do the delivery valves, I just wanted to go through a couple of these fittings on here. This of course is the fuel feed inlet. This is an oil passage. Uh, since since we have a uh, 24 valve P pump swap, we're gonna feed oil from this side, and then it needs a restrictor. I think uh, 0.07 is what I was told. Um, let's come around to this side. This is the main oil supply for a 12 valve, or I guess other applications, and it's actually built in. The uh, the oil feed line has a restrictor in the casting of the pump. So that's nice. So far this looks very Bosch-like. Everything seems to line up. It's, it's cool that they give you a fitting to come with it. That is very nice. And then that is the um, fuel return back to the, um, back to the fuel tank. And it comes with these banjos, which is, which is nice. Um, so that stuff is all in the normal location. Let's go ahead and move on to the delivery valves. 
It's very therapeutic working inside of a camping trailer up in the mountains during a rainstorm. Can't really be outside recreating right now, so why not take apart a P-Pump? Okay, this is a very nice socket. Super handy. I don't know if there's a part number on it. There you go. There's the part number. SP503 if you want to buy this from Snap-on. It is a uh, P-Pump delivery valve removal socket. So, um, Like I told you guys, I'd already gone through and loosened all these. They weren't super tight, but they weren't loose at all. So, looked like they did a good job with that. That all looks pretty good in there. Looks like a nice piece. First things first, we've got our spring. And the hat. That does look different. In one second, I'll get out a, uh, I brought some stock delivery valve stuff with me with the springs. I'll get it out and compare them side by side. But for now, I'm just gonna go through these. This is the delivery valve itself. There's the middle part of it. Um, the delivery valves I have do not have that piece on top. It's basically from here down is what I'm used to seeing, not that thing come off the top, which is kind of cool because it holds the spring, right? So that is kind of nice, but the delivery valves I have do not use that, that part. Now let's get the last part of the delivery valve. These don't have any markings on them of what size they are, but the I bought some on uh, eBay and they are 191 delivery valves, so that's what I'm gonna put in here. But I do wanna make a few comparisons before I get that far. Now let's look inside of here. These appear to be flat top. I'm gonna go ahead and move the rack so you guys can see that move, there you go. So with rack travel, you'll see those spin inside of there. And that tells you that your um, plunger isn't seized, your rack isn't seized, and everything's moving how it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna pull all these out all together and then verify that. And then what I wanna see when I spin the front of this, I wanna make sure they all go up and down. I should be able to see them travel just like you would if you're spinning over the crankshaft of an engine with all the pistons and crankshaft and rod bolted together. So um, I'm gonna verify all that and then I'll go through the delivery valves and put them all back in. So let me get this tore down and then we'll go from there. So looking at this delivery valve piece a little bit closer, it looks like there's some marks on it, like maybe poor assembly or like they grabbed it with a vice grips or something. It's whoa, focus, focus. Really odd looking marks on there. I don't think it will affect anything, but that does speak a little bit to the quality of assembly there. So you can assume, okay, if there's marks on that, is there marks on the cam in there? Is there marks on any of the or the plungers or anything important? But like I said, I'm just, Going through this because I haven't seen anyone do a review on these, so I'm trying to be as transparent at what I see as possible. I'm not promoting this, I don't sell these, I don't make money on these, but I wanted to do an informative video because I wish someone had done that when I was searching for them. And I thought, if nobody's done it, then I'm gonna be the one to do it. So that's just one of them. I'll probably look at the rest of them. Um, may not be any different quality than the, the Chinese parts that I have for the replacement delivery valves, which seem to work all right. So nothing to be concerned about, but it's something I wanted to point out. All right, I wanted to point out real quick while I see this, they do have uh, the shims underneath them. I've been told when you put new delivery valves in that you don't use the shims. So I'll probably leave these shims out. Um, but it is interesting that the shims come in there. These, these delivery valves don't have any markings on them as far as what the, uh, what the rating is on them. But these ones that I've got, these were Amazon or wish.com or wish, there it is, wish.com. Just kidding. But these are 191 delivery valves. I don't know exactly what the difference is. I think, I think it's the diameter inside that hole or the, the outside diameter of this piece right here, but I'm not sure. In fact, when I take them out right now, maybe I'll just uh, see what the difference is, see if they fit inside one another, because I know it does affect the amount of flow that gets through there, so I'd imagine it's a larger diameter hole for the, for the fuel to flow through. Okay, so I was wrong about these. I forgot about this. It is the difference between the uh, copper ones and these steel, I believe these are steel, stainless steel. They didn't stick to the magnet, so they must be stainless steel. Um, I was told to discard these and swap over to these. So the pump, uh, the Chinese pump has the more modern 
um, shims that we want. So don't leave the shims out. Just make sure you don't use the copper shims if you have them for some reason. You want to use these type of shims. It's definitely an upgrade. They, however, do not come with the delivery valves that I bought. So you either need to have them or purchase some or find them somehow. But I will be putting those back in with the new delivery valves. Okay, also regarding the delivery valves, um, I have three different sets. This is the 191s that are from this box. These are some 131s that were in an older pump that I had. I believe that's the standard low horsepower delivery valve size. And these are the ones that came in this pump. I don't, they don't have any markings. I don't know what size they are. But if I take the center of the 191, which like I said, I don't know if that's different or not, it does appear to fit in all these other ones. So that clearly would make it not um, the difference, right? It should, I just had it in there. does fit in there and fits in there as well so that is not the difference I don't know the difference I'm not gonna try and find out right now so if you know let me know in the comments what the difference is between a 191 a 181 a 131 um, obviously it's not the bore of that hole I'm kind of wondering if it's the way that those flutes are cut in there that allows more fuel or what it is. So let me know if you know, but either way, I'm putting this 191 in this pump. All right, now that we got that all apart, you can see they're all traveling with the rack. That all looks good, the plungers, the rack, the mechanism, the gear, everything seems to be working that way, so that's good. Okay, so I'm going to turn this over so we can watch those plungers go up and down. They're not easy to turn over as it's fighting the cam springs. But it looks like they're all moving how they're supposed to. I can actually use this fancy tool right here to figure out what the lift is on these. So this threads in. And this tool is designed for uh, to set your timing with. But in this case, I'm gonna use it to figure out my cam lift. Okay, that's our zero point right there. And then I'm gonna go till it's up on the cam lobe and see what the max travel is. Okay, coming up on the cam. It's not maxed out. So that is full travel is point four. So it's just off of point five. I mean point four seven five. Something like that. What me? Or point four eight. You wanna tell me, Adam? What's that number? That's a point four. And that one? That one is 22. So I'm gonna do a quick comparison of these delivery valves. I forgot I actually had another set of delivery valves. So these, this is the one that came in the pump. I don't know the size. This one is a Bosch original. It's a 131, Let's see if it'll focus. It has 131 stamped on the top. I believe that's the smallest one that comes in the Bosch pumps. This one is a 181. And then this one is the Chinese 191, which I ordered off of Amazon. So this is what I am going to use, um, but this is just a physical comparison of them. It's odd, these ones are tapered at the bottom, and this one is the opposite. It's large on top, small on bottom. This one is large on bottom, small on top. These other two are the same. Small bottom, large top, small bottom, large top. So I don't really understand what the difference is. If anybody understands the physical differences and where the flow and why the numbers are different about the delivery valves, I'd love to hear about it. Um, shoot me a message or leave it in the comments. Another difference I noticed I want to point out is the spring and 
I don't know, that's not a valve, I don't know exactly what that is. But that does not get replaced with the delivery valve, so I know that does, that doesn't affect the flow necessarily because it's not replaced. But this is the Bosch original one, and this is the one that came with the Chinese pump. So, I mean, obviously you can see the difference here between the two. I believe the, the fuel passes through the top of both of them, and they both have... Uh, well, this one's more like a banjo. It looks like the fuel flows through a hole on the side and then out the top where this one's just straight through. Um, and then the springs, I mean, it's just a spring, but I'm gonna trust the Bosch spring over that one. So I'm gonna run these uh, in the pump along with the Chinese 191 delivery valve. Maybe the fact that that has a stem on it makes up for not having the stem on the top side. So the spring stays in there. Maybe that was the theory behind that. I don't fully understand it, but I'm gonna run this with that, which is not what it comes with. It comes like this, it comes together with that. This is um, the standard Bosch style with uh, standard Bosch style also. Even though this is a Chinese delivery valve, it is the same style as both of these original Bosch ones. So this is what I'll be running. That's what comes in the pump. I wanna take a second uh, right now to thank the sponsor of this video. It's me, I don't have sponsors. This is a small channel without any financial backing. So I really appreciate your guys' support. If you're watching this, please like and subscribe. Um, I do have uh, a lot of drift related viewers and content, but I'm hoping to uh, branch out and do some other stuff. Obviously this is a diesel related video for this P-Pump and I'm hoping to, uh, to get a lot of viewers that do that stuff. I have a whole specific um, build on my Cummins in the Ford. I call it the four door Cummins project. And so I'll link that up here if you guys want to follow that build and stuff. But that's what this pump is for, is for my Fummins build. I don't like calling it Fummins. I call it four-door Cummins. Everyone says Fummins. But it is a uh, 08 Ford with a Cummins uh, swap in it. All that stuff will be linked up uh, up above. One thing about this whole whole deal with this pump is uh, I was looking for someone else that made a video about this. I would love that. I wouldn't have had to make this video. I would just go buy the pump knowing what I was getting into, but I don't. And so I wanted to do it, go through the process, and then put that out there for, uh, for anybody else that's trying to find the same information as me. One thing that I wish I could do, but I can't, I don't have the time or the resources to buy multiple pumps, but is to take the pump right out of the box to a pump shop, have it tested, flow tested, all that stuff, see what the professional pump builders say about that pump, if they like it or not. Obviously, they're probably gonna be biased because they wanna sell their own pumps, but find someone unbiased, do it that, that way. I don't think that's realistic to do. So I'm doing the best I can, but I, obviously I'm putting delivery valves, I'm putting governor springs, I'm doing all that modification right off the bat. I don't wanna have to do it in the truck. So sorry guys that I can't do all that stuff to show you, but. I'm doing the best I can to show you what I can while I'm doing it. Back to the video, let's go. All right, next up, let's uh, dig into this AFC housing here. Um, first things first, I wanna take the back cover off. That looks normal, just casting and all that stuff. The diaphragm, the Bosch ones I believe are blue diaphragms. Um, it looks like someone's been in here because there's some marks there. Um, it doesn't look super clean. Same thing as I saw on the uh, the other part. It looks like someone's been grabbing it with vice grips. Maybe that's just how they assemble it. But uh, that's just the first thing I noticed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the diaphragm apart. And uh, this piece is going to be a two-handed job. And then see uh, see what we got behind there. So it looks like I do actually have to grab it the same way they did. I don't know why they don't just use a normal nut on here, but uh, okay, there's the washer, there's the diaphragm. Diaphragm does feel a little bit cheap to me, maybe not, but it doesn't look nearly as nice as the Bosch diaphragm. Makes me wonder if you could like buy certain Bosch parts like that and put them in here to make it just a little bit nicer of a pump. Um, it just, it looks like this has been used. It looks like it's been around. That's kind of weird. But one of the mods you can do on these is you, uh, um, you get a washer that doesn't have that cup to it. Because what happens is as this cup travels inside of there, man, this is all dirty. As this travels inside of there, it'll actually bottom out right there can see that see how that bottoms out before that foot reaches full travel so that's full travel right there but if you tighten this up that's max travel with that washer but for example let's pretend it was a flat washer like this and that was on the bottom side 
you get full travel. And so that's exactly why when you watch AFC mod videos, they'll tell you to get a flat washer where this one goes is so you don't have that issue. And then um, that becomes your limiting factor. You can actually take this piece off, which we'll do in a second, and then you can cut uh, three to five millimeters off of there. I don't know the exact measurement, but I usually cut more than you need to because it's not necessary to have it all there. And then you'll get even more travel. Um, and that's how you max out the AFC. And then the one other thing you have inside of here is your AFC spring right there. Um, you can actually get softer springs for this, which is kind of depends on your turbo and different stuff like that. Um, but the benefit to that is if you get max travel and the spring compresses, you actually get spring bind. Um, if we were to compress the spring to all the coils are touching and then measure it, um, a, a, the spring they sell after market, you would be able to compress it and it would be a shorter spring under all coil bind. And I think that's the benefit of doing it that way is you get more travel so the spring bind doesn't create a, a rack, or sorry, a AFC housing travel restriction um, like COVID-19. So to get this foot out, we have to take this out. That'll allow us to remove that rod and the rest of it will come apart and then we can trim that foot. There we go. It's got an O-ring in there. Looks like it was doing a pretty good job of stealing because it was hard to get out. Okay, that comes out. Then this foot comes out. It's weird. These, these almost look like old Bosch parts instead of like uh, new castings. I'm really wondering how they're making these things. And that comes out. I mean, you can just look at that. It looks like it's rusty. This is brand new and it looks like it's been in there for years. So I don't know exactly what I'm dealing with. But everything was free to move and it was working. So I don't know how bad it is, or maybe this has been sitting in a box for years and there's a little bit of moisture in there. Um, but I mean, overall, it looks like they're doing a pretty good job of replicating it. I'm pretty impressed um, with all this stuff, but none of that goes to lend or lends itself to how well it runs. So I'll have to wait and find out how that all works. But the housing itself looks good. All that other stuff looks good. This is the star wheel that people talk about. When you get this piece out on top, you can actually use a screwdriver just like you would with a drum brake. Um, it's got a spring and a spring, and then you just, you know, go back and forth, back and forth. And basically, that'll be like a coilover suspension where it raises or lowers that spring on a threaded collar. And that adds more or less spring tension. That spring tension is fighting the boost pressure coming in. So as boost comes in on the back of the diaphragm, it's going to push that foot. And that's when you get your rack travels under boost. So under 30 or 40 pounds of boost, it's gonna smack. It's gonna max out on that side. You'll get full fueling um, from your AFC housing, which will allow the rack to travel inside of there. Um, if you want your boost to, to fuel, if you want your fueling to come on slower with boost, you're gonna put more tension on that spring, so it requires more boost to add fuel. And that's basically the whole idea with the star wheel and the spring is uh, controlling how boost, how fuel ramps in compared to uh, boost pressure. But I'm gonna move on, this looks all pretty good, other than this diaphragm. Um, I'll probably run, run, to, run it to start with because the AFC housing and the diaphragm are really easy to get to with the uh, pump on the truck. So I'm gonna run it just as it comes like this, aside from the mods I was talking about, and see how it works to start out with. Worst case, I can just grab one of my, my other AFC that I've got here. I can just toss this on there and modify them, but you can see the difference here. This one has an orange, um, I don't want to mix these parts up. This one has an orange diaphragm. This was actually a re from a reman pump that I got from O'Reilly. And uh, it used, I think it used all Bosch components for the rebuild. But yeah, that's been cut. You can see if you compare those two. I don't know if you can tell, but that one's definitely shorter. I already cut that one. The diaphragm is still in good shape, and then I have the washer and spring mod already done on this one. So I might steal some parts from here. Let me open that up so you can see it. That washer, I believe I took the original washer and I just cut it so it didn't have the lip on it. That would go like that. But I, I just wanted to show that comparison. The housings look really similar. Um, even the casting marks they have, 218, 
Um, it looks like it came out of the same foundry. That's wild. So now I've got my timing pin out and uh, I'm gonna spin it over till I find uh, top dead on here and then I wanna see what the measurement is at top dead on this pump so I can try and figure out what the original timing pin on this pump is set to in, as far as degrees go. Um, and I'm gonna do that the reverse way by f locking top dead, taking a measurement and then going to the chart and then seeing what that measurement equates to on the chart, assuming this is a 160 to 180 cam type pump. So the way I do that, I've got this set to zero. Um, so I'm gonna start spinning this over and it's gonna start coming up on the cam. Here's my foot for you. There it goes. It's coming up actually. That was perfect. There's the timing pin. Um, there it is. Let's put that in there. Make sure that locks in. There we go. That pin just pushed in. So that's locked in at, let's get our measurement here. So that's one, two, two point two five two six. So the, so the way we read this is we're, where's my finger? Okay, on that dial, come on. We've gone, assuming we start at zero, which we did, we've gone one, two, you see we're just past two right there, but not quite to 2.5, so the way we'd count this out, 2.2.05, and then of course there'd be 2.29, 2.3. So we are at 2.28 on our uh, cam lift. So I'm gonna write that down and then go uh, go look at the chart. But for now, since I got that number, I'm gonna pull this timing pin back out. Uh-oh, there's some load on it. There we go. And then this thing gets stored by just being flipped around backwards and put back in there. So as long as that's flipped around, you know you're not uh, you're gonna break those plastic teeth off. Uh, where's the cap? There's the cap for it. And when you pull this out on the truck, Oil's gonna come out of it for sure because the oil level of your pump and the way this is tilted, that's gonna be full of oil in the governor housing. So just be ready for that. <coughs> of course, I don't wanna forget about this, so I'm gonna snug it up right now. There we go. And on to the next part. So this tool right here is actually sold by Snap-on. Um, this gauge was not sold by Snap-on. So the way it breaks down, I actually looked it up on their website. This uh, blue point tool right here, I think was like $35 or $40. The socket was also part of the kit. The kit was $350. I didn't buy the kit. I bought the socket for maybe 30 or 40. And then I bought this for maybe 50 or 60. So it was under hundred bucks for this and that. However, the snap on dial indicator was $250. And that's what made it, I think 350, 330 or $350 for the whole set was their dial indicator. And I thought, oh, I, I can get a dial indicator for cheap. Like, and they're not gonna be inaccurate. Like a dial indicator is pretty solid. So what I did have to do is build this extension right here off the bottom. Um, and we actually ended up using a piece of welding wire, TIG wire. I balled the end and then ground it flat. And then uh, that's how I was able to, to make that work. And we were actually able to end up just super gluing it together which sounds rickety, but if all the tension's always that way and there's no play in it, it works just fine and it saved me $200. So to me, that's worth it. I'll show you how we did it here. So someone might make, uh, that piece on the very bottom is threaded, right? the joint between this welding wire and that is threaded. So if you get the right adapter, you could thread it in there and have the right length. My buddy has this exact tool from Snap-on, so I was like, hey, can you send me the measurement of what I need from from the end of this to the end of his tool. And so he sent me that measurement and uh, I built this piece pretty dang close to the same measurement. The TIG rod was able to just slip in there. And so I just put a little dab of super glue, slipped it in there, got that to work. This wasn't the right diameter. So I wrapped some uh, electrical tape. I'm sure there's a better way to do that. 
But every time I check it, I make sure there's no slop. When I crank this down and check it all, I make sure there's no slop so that the, the gauge will read accurately and it has not failed me yet. So that's how you can uh, that's how you can save some money doing it this way without having to buy the $200 snap-on dial indicator. These are both sold by Bluepoint. This is the socket, SP500503, SP5002 on this one. trying to find max racks max rack travel in here this is with the shutoff valve completely shut so when you turn the key and start the truck it's gonna go like that so this is the rack that's the rack travel there right so that's shut off so when you start it, it's gonna go there and then the uh, AFC foot is gonna control the amount of movement so we have no AFC restriction right now all I'm looking for is max rack travel so as we throttle up it travels forward that's the shut off. You see it shutting it off. So that's going to be wide open. So that won't be a restriction. That's full travel forward. And just to verify, I'm going to hold the throttle forward and then push on the rack with a screwdriver. It doesn't move. So that's full rack forward travel. Now let's come to this side on the front. That's where the rack cap is. And you can see it coming out. Um, if you look from it straight down from the top, you can see, we need some contrasting color there. You can see the protrusion coming out of there. And that's what this max rack cap does. Uh, or Mac, sorry, Mac rack cap. They call it a Mac rack cap because it comes on a, some sort of a Mac truck that uses this pump. Let's see if I can do this one handed. There's that. So really what we wanna do is make sure that there's enough travel inside with this cap threaded all the way on there that it does not limit travel of the rack, which I did. If we hold it about like that, that's gonna tell us it's close, but I actually verified by threading it on that it doesn't it doesn't hit. I keep traveling, keep traveling. It does not hit that cap. So that's really cool that they send you a max travel cap um, with this pump because the OEM uh, caps on the regular Cummins pumps are actually a restriction in rack travel because uh, the, the original pumps are not meant to travel that far. They're restricted on their travel. So this is, uh, that's a nice little upgrade from uh, this Chinese company that, that makes these pumps is it allows full rack travel. So I'm pretty convinced that this thing is like about as maxed out as, it, as it's gonna get. So I'm stoked on that because it didn't cost very much. Um, to get it to this point and a lot of the stuff was already installed how it should be i'll give you guys in one second i'll go through here and give you a breakdown of what everything costs okay so i came across something else interesting um that i need to point out this is the delivery valve that i just installed uh when i went to put all these in there um the way i had the spring configuration that i just showed you guys these were really stiff and hard to get in there so i could tell that there was spring bind um, or at least a lot more tension than there was when I took it apart. So something wasn't quite right. I don't want to run it that way So I went back to square one to actually start measuring and checking what's what Unfortunately, I don't have any calipers here with me to take exact measurements, but I don't think I necessarily need it I'm just comparing stuff um, to each other These are the springs. That's the one I just put in that's the Bosch spring and that's the one that came out of there same with the hat and we already talked about how the hat on the Bosch has that and this uh, the Chinese one does not have that this also has two shims underneath the very head of it, right there, um, which isn't necessarily relevant, but all that stuff together makes this overall spring and hat taller than the other one. There's that put together, and there's that put together. So just comparing them next to each other, they are different heights. So I could use that one, right? And that might, that might solve my problem. But uh, I wanna compare a couple other things. I went back and looked at all of these delivery valves that were in there. They look really dirty for being in a brand new pump. But what I hadn't noticed before is this is the only one that I pulled out and inspected. It does not have any Bosch markings on it. That has a Bosch marking. All the other ones have Bosch markings. That Bosch marking is on top. These Bosch markings are on the bottom. So it's almost like these are recycled Bosch delivery valves or something like that. But then, interestingly enough, these top parts of the delivery valve, I wish I knew the names of these parts. This first one I pulled out didn't have any markings on it. 
This one, also no markings on it, but then I got to these other ones. This one says 0.45. This one says 0.34. And this one says 0.45, but it's half worn off. So it kind of looks like these are used parts to me. They're not consistent. I don't know what those numbers are, but I'm sure they're, they mean something. They're not consistent. Um, half of them look used. This is a different casting than the rest of those. This one has this, the Bosch stamp in a different spot compared to the rest of them. And so it's not consistent among all of them, which makes me not trust some of this stuff, right? Um, I think what I'm gonna do is use the Bosch spring with this hat, try it out and see what the spring tension feels like because I still would trust this 200,000 mile Bosch spring compared to this one. Um, just peace of mind. I don't know why this, I don't know. I don't know if these are used. I don't know what's what with them, but I would rather use this match set of used Bosch springs with that top hat, which is gonna give me a little bit less height overall and hopefully not cause the bind that I was getting inside of here. All right, so let's just compare two of these. This is the one, how I'm gonna run it now, and this is how it was before. You can see the gap there is definitely pushing up. I actually had to put preload on it even to get the threads to grab, where this one is all ready to go. Like, it's not nearly as tall. So what I'm gonna do, I'm all mixed up here. Take that off. The piece is actually stuck in there. I have to pull it out with pliers. Um, I pull that out. I can't do it with one hand. I'm going to change this spring. Nope, correction. That is the correct spring. But I'm going to take the old hats, which is that, compared to that. I'll put it on top here. There we go. That'll sit like that. I've got to get this out of there and then put it back together. I have to use needle nose pliers to dig it out of there. That's all set up. So just got to balance this on top of that. Easy enough. There we go. And it threads in just perfectly. Same with that one. It's all set, ready to go. All right, those first three are set up. I'm going to finish doing these other three. And then we'll... Man, it's got a ton of tension on it. Boing. Yeah, that's not great. I don't know what that would cause, if it would run like that, if it would cause any sort of issues, but I don't want to find out. So I'm going to go with what is closer to uh, how it felt when I took it apart. So after looking at this and doing this and then realizing how stuck these were in there, I had to pry them out of there pretty good with these needle nose. So that tells me the, the, the head diameter of this is a little bit bigger than what fits in the, the female side in there. And that's why it's getting stuck. So I guess what I could do is use delivery valve holders from a OEM Bosch pump. I guess if you're mixing and matching, but for, the, for, for all intents and purposes, we're gonna assume that uh, you just bought this because you don't have a pump and you're not trying to save another pump. So assuming you don't have these, you would have to go this way, use the, the hats that came with it, not these hats, not that you would necessarily have these anyways, but the springs and hats that come with us are probably just fine. Um, I could have just left it alone, but I like tinkering with stuff, and so I'm gonna start with using Bosch springs, the Chinese hats, and then my Chinese delivery valves. I got no idea what's going on with this or why that is on there or if it's important. Of course, these need to be torqued down, which I'm not gonna do until I'm in the truck. Um, just like they did, I usually put a, a mark on stuff after I torque it, so I'll remember when I get to the shop and when this is bolted down and I have my torque wrench with me, I'll torque them all and mark them so that I know that they're all um, torqued down to spec. I think it's 80 something, don't quote me, but I, think, I believe it's 80 something or 90, somewhere in that range to, to get those tight. But they're all snugged in place. Um, the tightening felt pretty good. None of them felt too, too, too hard or too soft. The, uh, the O-rings went in there pretty smooth. So that's all done. I'm considering the, the delivery valve part of things done. All right guys, so we're back in the shop today. Um, I'm gonna be doing the AFC mods. And what I'm gonna do specifically on this one is I have to trim this still. Uh, I'm gonna trim this washer instead of trying to find one. I'm, I'm just gonna cut the lip off of that and then grind it smooth and then uh, Reassemble it and then I'm gonna pressure test it. So let's go ahead with that. Okay, so I set my uh, Micrometer to five millimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and use this end to make the mark this is different. Right about the middle of that X I don't know if I can do this one-handed and then I'll make my mark right there with a sharpie 
And of course you can just do this with a cutoff wheel. I'm gonna do it with a bandsaw. You could do it with a lathe if you want to be precise. But since that side never actually touches anything, it's not important that it's perfectly flat or even precision for that matter. That does not want to cut that. So it's definitely not straight at all by any means, but like I said, it doesn't really need to be. I've done this exact same thing before with the same result. You think I'd get better, but I haven't gotten worse. But uh, one thing is obviously any burrs or anything inside there we don't want. So I'm gonna get a drill bit that's a similar size and chamfer the edges so that it can travel smooth on the, uh, on the finger dinger. So like I said, not perfectly straight, but I just, I literally ran a drill bit through there by hand and just spun it around and kind of chamfered it, um, the inside and then verify that it slides smooth on here, which it does. So that's good enough for me. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together. This piece has to go in first and then you'll see it has that notch in there. That notch is to grab onto that pin. So that needs to happen like that. But then this needs to go through here. So you gotta kind of balance all three of them together like that. And then that goes in there course that's gonna go like we had it before I'm not gonna push that o-ring in yet make sure that moves with this that's all working we know that notch is in there down on there because it moves with that and then once that's all done uh oh I'll give her one of these uh oh oh there it goes boom I'm gonna edit that part out. <laughs> that never happened. I know what I'm doing, absolutely. All right, and then of course this screw, and I've heard arguments about this. Really when you, when you move that, when you pivot that side to side, it changes like the height of the foot. I don't fully understand that. The videos I've watched, the other guys seem to not quite understand. It has something to do with the travel of the foot or something that I don't understand, but most guys say to put it back where it was. This was about in the center. Everyone I've ever seen is pretty close to the center, so I'm gonna put that back in the center and hope that that's good enough. Okay, that moves like it's supposed to. Everything's good in there. And then, of course, if you remember, this was all about gaining travel with the piece we cut off right there. So now we have even more travel than before, enough so that this washer will hit there and everything is basically maxed out um, travel-wise. So I put this washer back on. This is the washer that we need to modify. And so we can actually take some measurements here. So you see the washer hits, there's a light. The washer hits right there since it's a cupped washer. So we're gonna make it flat, but I actually wanna measure how much we gain. So if we look right there, let's take a measurement between this point, just so we can verify where we're actually at. So we'll go with that. So that's full travel right now, 10.16 millimeters. And then let me measure this. Six point two eight, so we should gain uh, probably about five millimeters of travel. So that ten point one six should go down to like five point one or so. Okay, so I modified this washer. The thing I like about this washer is that it's round on top, so it's not going to dig in and cut the uh, the edge of that. So I wanted to use the original washer, and I literally just trim it down, and then uh, wire wheel the edge so there's no sharp sharp spots. And then I think it's going to work pretty well. And if you remember, we measured before uh six point something i don't remember you guys will know because you're watching the video and now we're down to 1.65 so we removed about five millimeters off of that so that being the case like i said i think we'll be about five millimeters shorter here we should be about five point something once i bolt that all together okay now with it all bolted together let's see what our full travel is here boom you see our washer is maxed out down there still got a little bit of a gap so i could have cut less off of there but there's no reason not to that i can think of 
zeroed out. Let's see where we're at. Nope, I need to hold that in there. Five point six two. How about that? We gained five millimeters of rack of not rack travel. Well, it really is rack travel, but AFC housing five millimeters more. That should equate to five millimeters of rack travel. Um, I'm going to do an air test, which basically simulates when the when the vehicle hits the boost and pressurizes this chamber. It's going to move that foot in and out. That's the whole idea, the whole principle behind this AFC housing. The diaphragm, the spring, the smoke screw, everything is set on adjusting um, the movement of the foot. And since we cut that, we got full travel of the foot. And since we modified the washer, that allows the foot to get full travel inside of here. So now we're gonna test it with simulated boost or uh, shop air. So let's see what happens. It looks like it's traveling like it should. I think we're getting that full travel, which just leaves five millimeters, just like we measured on the bench. So we're good to go. I'm gonna put the AFC back on and then move on to the Governor Springs. So I decided for now, I'm gonna put it together with no fuel plate in it. Um, that's gonna allow for maximum fueling. I'm just doing that for testing. Uh, ultimately, I do want a fuel plate, but I'll make that decision a little bit down the road. So in order to get to the Gov Springs, we're gonna have to take off this safety wire. Which I do the same thing on the Bosch pumps also take the safety wire off. <laughs> All right, so in order to get the um, governor spring, what'd you call that, cover? We gotta take off this, uh, what do you call that? How you say, thing? Okay. Where's the thing? Oh, this isn't good. Uh, so there's supposed to be a Woodruff key in there, right there, and it appears that it is non-existent. I don't see it inside there, and I don't see it on there. So, and I don't, I didn't see it fall out just now. So luckily we have an extra, but uh, that's another thing that we just found, is there's no Woodruff key. I'm going to check this one also. Anyways, we had to pull this off to get this off. Can't think of the names of all these things. This is, I guess, the Gover Governor Spring cap. So this is how we get to the Gov Springs. Inside here, we'll rotate the pump over until we see this, the spring hat, and then we can access the Governor Springs from there. So we want to roll this over until we get, until we see the springs come into view. That's Whoa. the spring hat right there. A little bit more, perfect. That gives us good access to, uh, to take it off. And so then, uh, there's a couple ways to do this. I'm not going to make a whole video about changing these. There's plenty of videos on how to do gov springs. But basically, you can take a screwdriver, modify it to uh, grab both sides of it. I usually use a screwdriver and kind of painfully work my way around. Um, the other thing you want to do is, some guys say to count turns the, uh, to take it off, or you actually measure the distance from the very top of this to the very top of the center post to how far down that... Uh, that nut is if you want to call that a nut and then match that that's going to affect your idle um, depending on what springs you have the the tension you put on the springs with that nut is going to affect your uh, your startup and idle I found some small needle nose pliers that fit perfectly in there I'm gonna use those to take this off and then once I get there do that I've been told make sure you use a magnet because you absolutely don't want this falling in once it's off. So we'll take that to the side, take this piece off, kind of have to wiggle it free. Use a magnet for all this stuff. Get that out. And then take out the spring pack. These look like normal, uh, these look like normal springs that would come out of a Bosch pump. They don't look like used like some of the other parts. And then there's a bunch of shims in there, which Bosch pumps also have. So there's a, there's a quick snapshot of everything that came out of there. A whole bunch of shims, all different stuff. What I'm really wondering is if they actually go through and balance these pumps before they ship them out or if they just kind of put them together. That's kind of why I wish I would have started this and ran it without the gov springs, but I really didn't want to pull the pump apart twice. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the gov springs now uh, while I have it out.
So this is what comes out of it. It's got a medium spring, well, small, medium, and a large spring. This is the aftermarket Gov kit. You have a small, 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 medium, and then re we reuse this, which is the idle and startup spring. So we'll move that over to there. This is for 4K, this is for 3K. Um, obviously use all of them for 4K. If you want 3K and not 4K, you leave that one to the side. I like to turn it up all the way. So we're gonna stack all these springs together, put the idle spring on. This is the bottom hat now. This is a aftermarket bottom hat. And slip it in there like that. And then this is the original piece, the original top hat. That goes back in there. And then the same with this piece. And that's it, I'll tighten that back up to the spec I measured, and then we're done. We got that all wrapped up. Um, I got the fuel feed fitting in. I just wanted to go through and show uh, this stuff real quick. So, this is really hard to break loose, but after I got the safety screw out, it's just an eight millimeter, just like the Bosch is. This is the star wheel um, cap. And then of course you can reach in there and adjust the star wheel with a screwdriver. This is a pen, not a screwdriver, but you just go that way or that way, just like you would with a, a brake drum. Um, so I'll mess with that once I get it on the truck. And then you got the smoke screw right here. Comes with this cap on it. Looks like you could safety wire that cap, which is kind of nice. And then you can loosen that 10 mil. I'll bet that's a three, I believe that's a three mil Allen. And then you can just run that in or run it out. And basically all that does is put tension on the spring, which will move that foot inside of there and allow you to set your pre-boost fuel um, but there's plenty of videos about that. I'm not going to go into detail on all that stuff, but, uh, I think that's it so far. So good on all that. I'm going to put this back together and install it on the truck and then I'll give you guys an overview once it's running. All right, guys, let's talk about what I paid for all this stuff. First up is the injection pump. I found this on Amazon. I was very impressed with how quickly it arrived in the United States. It did ship directly from China for this pump. I paid $972.54. Next up are the 191 delivery valves. As you guys know, there's several types of delivery valves available on the market. I chose 191s for my particular application and I paid $31.96. I think all P-pumps would benefit from an increase in available RPM by replacing the governor springs. I haven't found any reason to buy expensive governor springs. I've used these in the past, so I decided to go ahead and install these on this application. For these governor springs, I paid $24.66. Looking around, there seems to be various sellers offering these pumps for sale on Amazon and eBay. Here's a couple examples I found recently. It's the summer of 2023, just for reference. And it looks like anything you find is about $1,000. Now let's get back to the video. I finally got the uh, pump installed today. It fits pretty nicely. Everything looks good. Like I said, this is a 24 valve swap um, in a Ford. So you see the lines going over and all that stuff. and. Uh, yeah, so it fit nicely. The gear went on great on the front. Um, everything lines up like it should, and it worked out. Worked out great. I did have to buy the inserts for the throttle bracket so that there was M8 threads on the side. Um, I was only, only able to get two of them in there, and I was actually able to hammer an M6 nut into the third one. I literally just wedged it in there and used a, uh, a third uh, nut and bolt, and I think it'll hold pretty well. But, uh, the guy at the pump shop told me two, two bolts should be sufficient for that. Um, I still wanted to do three, but I think two would be fine, especially considering the small amount of load that's on there. Uh, it started right up. I ran it. I set this at 18 degrees um, timing, and then I was just messing with the star wheel and the smoke screw. And after making some final adjustments, we hit the road for a 1,500-mile journey round trip from Salt Lake to Southern California. I wanted to report that the truck r drove really well. Uh, we got pretty good fuel economy and it didn't smoke excessively. I was able to dial in the uh, smoke screw and the star wheel to get optimal performance. I'm really impressed with how well this pump does and 10 out of 10 I would buy again. Of course the one thing we don't know is the longevity since we haven't done more than 1500 miles of driving in it yet but I would expect to uh, see this thing last quite a while. If anything changes of course I'll post in the future but most of you will probably be watching this video looking for answers at the end of it and that's what I've got 1500 miles worth of testing. Take that for what it's worth. Thanks for watching guys. If you haven't yet please go check out the rest of my channel. Like, subscribe, leave a comment that really helps me out and I hope this video is helpful for you.